tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! I say a little prayer for you. Forever, forever, you'll stay in my heart. I can't sing or I would. But we're basically trying to use every song that has forever in the lyrics to begin. Yes. So if you guys show. have ideas, tell us. Sweet us. <laughs> Jinx? Jinx. Um, guys, welcome to the Forever After Buzz After Show. We are season one, episode six. I can't believe it's six episodes already. I'm your host, Kate Aquilano, joined by my lovely co host I'm Mary Lou Mandel. Hi, guys. Hi, I'm Peg Red. All right, guys. This episode, the frustrating thing about psychopaths, before we get into that and break it down, I want to let you guys know that we have Joel David Moore calling in. Lucas. Plays Lucas. We cannot wait to speak with him. He'll be calling in momentarily. And then we have some good news and gossip with some behind-the-scenes photos. So stay so tuned good. for that. So good. But let's get into tonight's episode. It was really dark. So overall, what did you guys think? Oh, my gosh. Intense. I want Very. To say one of my favorite ones so far this, this season. Yeah. 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 What about On you? the edge of my seat the entire time. <sighs> killer after killer. It was dark. Yeah. I mean, this, it has to be maybe the one that we were the most vocal in viewing. I know. Yeah, we got we, yelled at. We got in trouble. We were screaming <laughs> at, during it. And <laughs> there's a studio next. Obviously, this house is full of studios. And he goes, be quiet. We can hear you in there. And I was like, oh, my God. Because something happened. And we're all like, oh. I, oh, I think it was when he got stabbed. But we'll get to that. <laughs> so it opens on um, a woman exiting a building. She slips the valet a, a large tip. You don't really know what she's doing there, if she lives there, if she's working there. Um, but she's like, I'll grab a cab up the road. I'm like, that's never a good good mm, thing. Yeah. Why and don't you get a, dress. get a cab <laughs> in front of like a populated area? And it doesn't turn out well for her. No. It's not good. Um, her name is Mary Kelly, we find out eventually. But they go to the, um, next we see Lucas and Henry in the medical examiner's office. Yeah. And um, we, I think Lucas has alluded to his a passion for graphic novels. And mm -hmm. he's like, there's a guy on the table that's just died of a heart attack. And he's like, why can't there be like an alien crawling out of his chest? And you're like, this graphic novels are getting to his head. Oh, Lucas just wants some excitement. I mean, yeah. I loved his little alien impression, like crawl, coming out, whatever you love it. I want. We're gonna ask him. I wonder if he's a fan of graphic novels in real life. We'll we'll get to Question. that. We would take bets on that. I, I'm gonna say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did anybody else think that when the phone rings right then that it was going to be Adam? Adam? I totally Every thought time it was. the phone rings, I think it's going to be Adam. But just the way he paused and he was like, oh, it's Henry. Or it's um, uh, it's Joe. Joe. Well, she calls because they have a, sus like a suspicious package and he's like, at the, at the precinct on Detective Hansen's desk and he's like, well, that's probably a job for the bomb squad. And she's like, um, it's bleeding. bleeding. <laughs> and uh, what did you guys think about that? Nasty. I was thinking they were going to open it. It was going to be like a strawberry cupcake that exploded or something. <laughs> <laughs> like a pastry. He's going to be like, oh, but there's a note inside. Yeah. Not good. No, it was actually a bloody heart. Yeah. I love when Hansen gets out like the cleaning spray. <laughs> I would just like take that desk away. If there was a bleeding heart on my desk, I'd be like, I need a new one. New stat. one. Yeah. Take that old one away. <laughs> um, but basically... They want to know why would you send, like, evidence, basically, to the cops mm -hmm. for attention. Yeah, and that's, they bring that up that with psychopaths and serial killers that they eventually do contact the police because, you know, for attention, or that's kind of how they get caught. They start mm -hmm. to make mistakes. They get a little cocky. Mm -hmm. I want to know, they go to the doorman next. Mm -hmm. How did they find him? Like, how did they connect... The victim. They got the client list. Client list. Okay. Right. And so the doorman was like, I don't know who you're talking about. And yeah. then finally he was they like, him in a lie. I know who you're talking about. And then Henry just storms off. Can we just talk about his inner compass that he has? He just <laughs> kind of knows where to walk to and finds a clue or, yeah. or something. Um, he like, finds a big Can clue. Can you see me? Yeah. 
like hiding around the corner. He's like, Joe, do you see me? Do you see me? <laughs> no? Yeah. Exactly. This, this is where it happened. Yeah. This is where it happened. Well, it leads to a freight elevator, and then it leads to, I think it's called Dorset Brother Meets. And you see in a flashback that that's a huge clue, and it is a copycat killer of Jack the Ripper. What? 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 Yeah, because... He put together Mary Kelly. Mary he put Kelly. Together. 1888 killing of Mary Kelly. So when they find the body in the meat shop, it's basically, you know, like cut for cut. Uh, and it's really gross. Like, <laughs> And it's like, laying the way that the flashback was laying, too. It Everything yeah. down to a T, like the inches of a... Of the incision. incision. It's, it's a solid replica. Solid replica. So, and obvious, I thought it was so funny when they, they're they back at the Emmy's office and he's like looking at the original Jack the Ripper crime no, crime notes. And Joe's like, how uh, do you have yeah. that? He's <laughs> like, like what? creeper, why do you have that? And it's like, because uh, I was there. <laughs> yeah. So because he did say there that the medical examiner profession did not exist until the Jack the Ripper case. So was he the original medical examiner? I think so. Well, I think he was, yeah. I think that's it what they're implying. I think they took, you know, it more seriously because there was a lot of clues that an ME could give detectives. Mm -hmm. And they probably, you know, that precedent was set with that case. Yeah. Right. Oh, lots of Dr. Henry Morgan. So he was looking over at her wrist, and is that when he found out that the star was not a semicircle? Yeah. And Adam calls at the same time. Oh, yeah. Well, Adam calls first, and he's like, this is when you're like, I saw him in the crowd. Yes. You did too, right? I, I there was going like crazy. a little glimpse of a guy on his cell phone, and I'm like, is split that him? second older I man, you you didn't? gray hair. I swear, uh, yeah. We should have paused it. We should have. We, we should have that we it. It. You're on it. Oh my God, guys. <gasps> Is it time? It's time. Is it time? Joe, David Moore, are you it's, on the phone? It's time. Hey. Hey, boy. Hey. How are you? Hi, hi girls. How you doing? Are there three of you? There yes. Are. You're talking to Kate, Mary Lou, and Pega. Hello. Thank well, you so well, much. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> we know it's very late where you are, so thank you so much for staying up and joining us. Oh, but please, late on a Tuesday night to call three girls. You're you're you're, know, you're all right. On. You're all this right. Is like this is a guy's dream. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, that's what Donnie said last week too. <laughs> yeah. Are you stealing his? Exactly. Stealing his we lines. Just stay up and we talk some gossip. It'll be great. It'll be love great. It. <laughs> Get your wine out. All right. I have a quick question for you before uh, my co-host jumps in. One of our few few criticisms of Forever is that there is not enough Lucas in each episode. So please tell me that changes in future episodes. Well, for the first year, this is kind of going to be how it is because we're, we're establishing a show. We're establishing sort of like the, 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 the greater arc, which is what you guys got a lot of today, what the audience got a lot of today, which was the Adam side of the story, which I think is w wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I think the more that we kind of dip into that, the, the more that forever becomes a little bit more than a procedural and more of, you know, like a mythological and... And the, the, the idea of, you know, the, the overarching story that Henry Morgan has to go through is, becomes more interesting along the way. But we have to establish that, and we'll get to everybody's episodes, and we'll get to all of my, my backstory and the fun stuff that, you know, comes on later. All if right. and when we, we make more and more episodes. Well, since we're on the topic of Lucas, and we want to know more about Lucas... Um, Matt Miller did a show before called Chuck, starring Zachary Levi. I know you and Zachary Levi are, are buddies. Do you think that Chuck and Lucas would be as good of friends as you guys are in real life? Uh, well, yeah, because I think that there's a lot of similarities between uh, me and Josh Gomez, right? You know, mm -hmm. he's kind of the, the, the guy that's trying to figure everything out as yeah. it goes along. Look, Z look uh, in... in Chuck, Chuck had a story. Zach had a story. He had this secret that he was holding, and Josh eventually, uh, his character eventually, Morgan eventually, picks that up. And I think that there, yeah, there's some similarities there. What a fun and, parallel! And you know, there will be some fun stuff where I'm learning more about what is going on with Henry and trying to figure it out as uh, as we make more episodes. So there's, yeah, there's there's a lot of similarities, and I like that. And Chuck was such a great show. Oh my gosh, I, mean, I love look, that I'm biased show. because I love the, the <laughs> people from it, but 
you know, and I also love Matt Miller and, and things that you know, he, he DP'd that. And that's where I met Matt. And that's where this entire oh, thing came cool. along. For, yeah, for me to be a, be a part of this. You know, Matt called, said we met on this. And he had to remind me, <clears throat> but we, we met on this. And it was great. And we had a good time because I did an ep- episode of Chuck. Uh, and so to be able to kind of have that all come to fruition was fun, you know, for Matt and I to be able to do another show together. So it's great. How much of Joel is in Lucas? Do you like comic books? Are you quirky like that? How much of Joel do you actually put into Lucas? There is a lot of Joel into in Lucas because one of the things that Matt really wanted in this character was for me to bring me. He said, look, I love who you are. I love what you bring to things. And you can do the dialogue, do one on the page, and then kind of just do you. And that was something that we kind of talked about from the very beginning. And everybody knows that I'm going to bring a lot of what I want to bring to it. And that's important. I think the levity of this show is what helps drive all of the drama and all of the blood and guts of the show along. You know, it helps kind of balance it all out. So. It's important, and, and I think that Matt realizes that, and that's, uh, that's a special relationship that we have. That's oh. awesome. Well, d- like I said earlier, Donnie, who plays uh, Detective Hansen, was on the uh, After Buzz show last week, and we were asking him what set is like, and he said that you take the prankster role. Was he <laughs> accurate? I was like, because there's always a prankster on set. He is accurate, okay. and Donnie is just one of, <laughs> as you guys know, Donnie is just one of the greatest guys that I've ever been able to work with. He is one of those guys that's just so special. He's so light. He brings such uh, a, a positive energy to set every time, and so everybody's so happy when he, when he's there, you know, because mm-hmm. it's so great. It's so, it, listen, we have to spend 12, 14 hours a day with our cast, and so when we have these opportunities to be able to put together such a great cast, um, such a great group of people, we, we're lucky. You kind of look back and you're like, you're lucky. You're lucky you're able to work with such great people. And so that, that really helps. But Donnie is correct. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it's as, as much prankster as it is just being a goofball because okay. kind of sets need that, you know. There's, there, it's, there's, there's heavy sets. And there's light sets, and we wanted to make sure that we were bringing a light set in all the heaviness that we're creating. And, you know, this is still a drama. Yeah. And uh, Judd and I do a, do a good job, I, I hope, <laughs> of, of bringing levity to it. But, yeah, but, you know, like, it, it, needs, it needs some fun on set. You're, you're shooting long hours, and especially, you know, <laughs> especially I'm getting a hug from Allison Hayslip right now. I don't know if you know who that is, but you should. Um, because she's visiting me. That just happened right there. Hi, Allison. Hi. 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 She's literally staying in my guest bedroom for like, what, seven hours and then you got to do a show? What are you doing tomorrow? Let's pitch your show too. Oh, uh, yeah, let us know. Uh, she, she's going to be a guest on Nick Lachey's Big Morning Buzz. I don't know what that is, but it oh, sounds awesome. Oh, very cool. <laughs> I like that. You know, that. I'm a huge fan of 98 Degrees, so... Hey. Oh, yeah. Um, who, no, who doesn't um, like 98 but degrees? Yeah, so, so, yes, the answer is yes. We have a, we have a great time, and, uh, and, and more pranks will come out, and you'll see the behind-the-scenes stuff. It'll be fun. Well, we have some exclusive behind-the-scenes pictures we're going to show um, our viewers later on, and it does look like a really fun set. So um, keep up the pranks. There yes. is the goofballness. <laughs> And then, so, and then speaking you, of uh, behind the scenes stuff, so you and Johan both worked on James Cameron movies, Avatar and Titanic. We did. Do you yes, guys, do you guys yes. talk about that stuff? What's the gossip on that? <laughs> What's the gossip? Go- you're just going straight into the gossip, huh? No questions. Just like tell me the no, gossip. No, I just need the dish. We need the dish. <laughs> we need it. You are girls, and it is 2.30 <laughs> at night. Straight to the true. point. <laughs> uh, are you guys East Coast or West Coast? We're West Coast. You're West Coast. Oh, it's so much earlier for you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, the, dish, the dish is the thing that we can both agree on, that James Cameron is um, the most prolific uh, director of our generation. He's absolutely fabulous, and you know he works harder than any director that I've ever met he's there before everybody uh, is there and he's the last one to leave the, it, it, doing the first avatar was 
going to graduate school. You know, you, you're learning every day that you're in there. You're learning something new, something about filmmaking, something about technology, and then just something that Cameron wants to tell you along the way because he's he's a world of information. The guy could have been a brain surgeon. He could have been an astronaut. He chose uh, filmmaking, which we're all happy about. <laughs> Very because, thankful. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're lucky to have him in our industry, but, you know, yeah, just a fabulous guy. And I, I'm sure that uh, that uh, Yoan could share different experiences on Titanic that I could uh, mm-hmm. on Avatar, but uh, we got the same guy, and yeah. we're lucky yeah. to both have worked with him. Yeah, I have a friend that works in, the, in James's production office and says that he's definitely there before everyone and it's gone after everyone. Oh, I'm sure. And it's just yeah. fun all the time. <laughs> very hard worker. Very, very interesting guy. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing to be around him because of the, you know, he, he, he didn't just, he wasn't given anything. He worked his butt off to get to where he was. And I appreciate that because I came from uh, Portland, Oregon, made my way to Los Angeles, worked my butt off to get where I was. So the hustle um, is real. We had a lot of things in common on on that side, but yeah, just a great guy. I was just going to bring that up. You're a West Coast boy, Portland. I'm sure you've been to New York plenty of times, but how is it filming a show in New York and being on a very New York show like NYPD? You know, it's, it's you got to do that city proud. Yes, New York. I have I I've shot little things here and there and and you have to come here probably once a year to do press to do mm-hmm. whatever you need for other shows or other films but living in New York is a whole different experience and I actually didn't realize it until I got here you know I I my girlfriend and I moved here and and we about a month in I kind of t- I turned to her and I said this is I I love this city And she's like, I know, I love it too. And I was like, no, I think, (laughs) no, like, it's a problem. I really love this. You're like, I'm not leaving. I may want to stay. Like, this is a big, this is kind of a bigger deal. No, you know, look, we, I love this city so much because of the smallness of the city. And that sounds weird because New York is such a vast, giant city. But it's all the little bodegas and the little shops that you can go to if you're living in the, the area that you're living. Like, you can walk out of your door and be at 40 different restaurants wherever you are in the city. And you don't get that feel in Los Angeles. You have to drive everywhere. Drive right. Walking places is fun. <laughs> Not having a car is fun. These little, you know, the little things that New York gives you is, is, is nice, you know. I, don't, I, can, I can drink. <laughs> and then I can just walk home. It's exactly. Nice. I don't have to worry about anything along the way. Not too shabby. Besides vagabonds, there's a lot of <laughs> vagabonds around here. No, but they're, they're, those those are in Los Angeles yeah. as well. <laughs> there's like, vagabonds here we too. We got those too. Well, I have a question from one of our Twitter followers, uh, Zaz G4. He's all the way from Scotland. He wanted to ask you, what has been your favorite scene to shoot so far? Well, Zaz G4. I love your country. I was just there a couple of years ago. I went, I toured the entire country. I am my, one of my other middle names. I have a lot of middle names, Joel David Moore, but my, my full name is Joel David Irvin Moore. And that is the Irvin clan in, um, in Scotland, Irvin, Scotland. So if you're listening right now, I've been there. I've, I've, I've visited my fellow. I don't know if I'm related to him at this point, but whatever that version of that is, we saw other Irvins. It was a lot of fun. Very cool. Um, I don't know what, what what was the question. Now I'm now. I'm <laughs> we got on a Scotland <laughs> rant. Scotland. Um, so, what was your favorite scene to shoot? Of this episode, or in uh, general? He just said so far. Oh man, I don't know. It, it, you know, <clears throat> the storylines are becoming more and more interesting. So I I think probably something in the future was okay. uh, was my. I, I, I'll, I'll put it this way. My interactions and my trying to figure out and learn Henry Morgan is really fun. So every, all the little pieces that we have, like the, the today, you know, when I'm saying that this is boring and nothing's happening, mm-hmm. and then boom, we get a heart <laughs> delivered to us. Those little moments are fun for me because it's a it's a it's a way for Lucas to explore this new thing, this this thing that that he's been given, just like Henry has. You know, we were never a part of. The, uh, of a criminal investigation until very recently when Joe came and went to detect it. The, all, uh, the entire police force came into our uh, 
into our world. So mm-hmm. it's fun to kind of like explore the enti- in- entirety of a case instead of just getting a body, figuring out what happened. We can, we can take it from beginning to end, and that's fun for us. So I kind of enjoy all of it. I don't know if I have like <laughs> one little moment or one little scene that's my favorite. <laughs> my favorite was probably You and the Rats. I was, I was, oh, I, the... I, it was my favorite because it was so scary to me because oh, I was no. like, I can't, I can't be around rats, and he's like holding a cage, and there's three rats in there. Wasn't now, it? why can't you be around rats? Because they what's scare me. They're not too bad. I used to have a rat as a pet. Oh, oh we're learning I'm fun just stuff, be honest right now. stuff about Joel. It was like, I don't know, I, it was like, a, maybe it was a cool thing. I don't know what I was doing. I was kind of a nerd back then. <laughs> but I, I feel like it was around 13, 12, 13, when you did weird things to try to figure out who you were. And my weird thing to figure out who I was was I owned a rat. And then uh, <laughs> one night it got out of the cage. See, and I that's why I don't own right a rat. The cage. This is the problem. I was sleeping next to the cage, and I woke up, and it was actually on my sleeping bag. So that was the end of my rat days. That there was no more rats after that because it was getting out, and I was not um, careful enough to kind of, like, keep it in its cage. But that was it. But I did own one, so I liked it. I would hold it by its tail and, I don't know, oh. feed it. What do you do with a rat when you're 13? Why did I have a rat? Why did you now have I'm, one? Now I'm considering like my entire life. What was I doing the entire time? Was I adopted? <laughs> so many questions. Did my parents ever love me? Oh, oh, gosh. What have done to me? <laughs> Um, so I saw you tweet out to one of uh, my friends who's also your co-star mm-hmm. on Bones, Pej, about uh-huh. the uh, San Francisco Giants. Are you a big Giants fan? Well, I grew up... Um, in Portland, Oregon, mm-hmm. and so you had a choice. You had to either be uh, a Mariners fan oh. or a Giants fan, and I had an uncle who lived in Mill Valley, California, so I went to the Giants side, uh, and I also went to the Niners side. It was more the Niners than the Giants uh, as a reason why I was a fan of the San Francisco sports gotcha. situation, but, I, but it was very easy to be a Niners fan at that time because I was the Montana Rice era, and... You know, we, we were, they were just winning a bunch of rings, so, you know, I, I, I was a fan. Yeah. Now I'd probably say that I'm not, I'm not really a baseball fan. Hmm. I'm a huge Blazer fan, Portland Trail Blazers ah, fan. Yes. And I will be until the day that I die. Nice. That's just my, that's my thing. I'm an Oregon Ducks fan as well, uh, and we're rising in the rankings. We're going to make the playoffs. We're very happy. <laughs> this, is the, this is almost the nerdiest thing I could talk about yeah. on two <laughs> On three attract with three attractive girls at two thirty in the morning. Um, <laughs> with so, Allison sitting there next to you, like, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Yeah. But exactly. But I do have an appreciation for San Francisco sports because of my uncle Bob. Doesn't everybody have an uncle Bob? I, I feel think like so. everybody has an uncle Bob. I have an uncle Bob. Ben. Uncle Bob. Do you have an uncle Bob? Does anybody have an uncle Bob here besides me? I don't. <laughs> I don't. Oh, no. you just got, you struck you out over than, three. You guys are younger than me. You guys, you guys have, like, an Uncle Star or something like that. <laughs> Our uncle's a little more eccentric. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Bones, um, another Twitter follower has said that Forever is, like, Bones meeting Sherlock. And I, as a Bones alum, I wanted to know if you agreed with that. Well, I do agree with it, and I've actually said that uh, before in interviews. I think oh, that maybe they got a, that a, from a, you. A, a, <laughs> Yeah, you you got it right. That was that's that's great. It's sort of a a beautiful mesh of both of those. Sherlock Bones with a little bit of like what's popular in the mythology side of things. Maybe it's a it, it's a Vampire Diaries or a little bit you know, of the, Dexter. The idea that somebody could live forever. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. De- Dexter, he was killing. His, uh, he was he was the one who was killing. Yeah. And I don't know that uh, Henry's going to get to that anytime soon. But, but the, the medical uh, examiner well, but, that's giving everyone all the info. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It would be a good time for him to become a serial killer. This would be like the perfect time. <laughs> well, Adam suggested. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they alluded. He can kind of get away with anything that he wants ever. Like he he'll never get fired. So yeah, it'd be a good time for him to do it. But uh, he's got too big of a heart. That's a problem. You live for 200 years. Maybe you just stop being immoral. Yeah. Maybe that's what happens. <laughs> just um, love um, yourself. No, but I think, I think that, the, that the, the longevity of this show will prove itself in, the, the, in what he is dealing with, in the 200 years that he's lived, in the fact that he can't die, in the mystery of why 
Henry Morgan is Henry Morgan and how he has survived this entire time with this, you know, uh, whether it be a, a blessing or a curse, mm -hmm. that's for, I guess, the audience to decide. <laughs> but that entire, you know, that entire storyline is what's going to, you know, I think what the audience is really going to get into as we move forward. Uh, speaking of moving forward, can you tease anything? I know it's probably like a hush hush, don't talk about this, but any little tidbit of what's going to happen in the future? Well, um, there will be Lucas looking into what's going on with, okay. uh, with Henry. That will come up. There will be some more figuring out what Ad who Adam is and how he sort of uh, fits into the mold of Henry and what that entire um, situation is about, because I think that that's important. I think it's important for, you know, listen, we're making a procedural. It's a, it's a great show. I'm proud of it. But it's also, it's all, it, it also takes it to the next level. It is a different type of show. There is something going on. There's something that, that um, an audience can, from season to season or episode to episode, when we're unfolding the, the history of Henry and, um, and how he is involved with this Adam character and what it is about death. And his, his, you know, his search for death and our search for who is dying is very interesting to me. And I think that's what Matt did so well is he, he placed a person who's a medical examiner who can live forever. And, and um, while he's trying to figure out who died the entire time, he's also trying to figure out how to die. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the mass of that is really interesting to people. So we'll be getting into that as the story unfolds. But again, we're, we're, we're building a procedural. This is not going to be at the end of this up at the end of this season everything is going to be answered mm -hmm. that would be boring you guys hopefully want it to go on for years and years I so want it to go on will come forever in. yeah these <laughs> answers will come in you know as as uh as the seasons are revealed and so and that that's what i think is is great about a show like this i would love to see a scene where lucas answers the phone and it's adam and he gets defensive of why this guy keeps calling and bothering his friend yeah. Well, who am I speaking to right now? This is Mary Lou. Is she right? Well, Mary Lou, it's it's funny that you said that because in the pilot episode, I actually did speak to Adam. You did? Oh, right in the beginning. You oh, you can. It's that. for you. Go. It's for you. Yeah. yeah, but you don't know at this point. Like, if yeah. once he knows what's going on, will he ever yeah. know what's going oh. on? If he does, if he does, no. Like, say. Well, if I'm talking to Adam and I know what's going on, then I know everything about Henry. Exactly. So exactly. That probably won't be for a while. But I will say that that entire storyline is going to reveal itself a lot more, and you're going to learn a lot more about that. Good. Right. Yes. So excited. That's what we want. All right. A quick Good. little fun uh, question real quick for you. This was a Halloween-ish episode, mm -hmm. Jack the Ripper. Halloween's coming up. I want to know what you're dressing up as for Halloween. We wa I, I walked into... <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm telling you this. I walked into a Forever 21 the other day, and we almost bought, um, well, I won't say matching because they weren't matching. One was a panda suit, and one was a giraffe suit. They but the yes. entire, like, zip-up, like, zip-up suit, you know, when you, what you wore when you were when like you were a, a kid. Like, like the, the onesie pajamas. pajamas. With the feet like the and everything. Like the onesie with the hood that look like a giraffe or they a have those at they forever fit, 21 so neither of them fit i was very disappointed they oh. did not fit so we're not going to be able to use those it. but i think i'm going to go for something like that i don't know i don't know I, I so mean, you go for an comfort it's going to be an animal it's going to be comfort and warmth in new york at exactly. this time i'm sure it's not too warm uh, you see i'm smart too very you gotta be smart, smart when it when it gets <laughs> this cold in new york all right, awesome. Joel, thank you so, so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Hopefully you can call back later in the season because we would love to hear from you again. Absolutely, girls. And thank you so much. And, you know, uh, if anybody wants to talk to me, they can talk to me on Twitter I at Joel David Moore. Come, uh, follow me, talk to me. Let me know how you, you know, what you think about the show. And we will uh, converse as the shows air. Perfect. Thanks so much, Joel. Thanks, Thanks so much, Joel. Joel. All right. Okay. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Tell Allison good night for us, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. He's like, what are you working on? Um, he was so sweet. He gave us a little, little tease. A little tease. I'm so excited about this.
You, I think you're right, though. I mm. think he's going to get into the whole Adam mix. Yeah. He just couldn't reveal too much. I, know. I hope he does. That'd I hope fun. he does. Okay. Like, actually, okay, yeah. He did talk to him in the first episode, I remember. I do but remember now that he said Without that. the knowledge of what's going on. Right. So that's what I want. I want him to be in on it. Like like he said, it probably won't happen too soon. Right, because he doesn't necessarily need to know that Adam is this guy who also is like Henry. Like, he could just right. know this is a guy that's harassing oh, Henry. Oh, yeah, like stalking Like, Henry. why are you harassing my friend, bro? Don't do yeah. that. He doesn't that's need to I know want. anything. No. You're right. No. All right, we'll I'm see on what to happens. You. I'm on to you. Joel, were you lying to us? <laughs> um, to get back into tonight's episode, um, where were we? We were... Uh, um, the semicircle versus the star. The s- yeah. So he... They got something wrong. Yes. From the original uh, Jack the Ripper murder, there was a semicircle. There was a semicircle, but... In the original. But in a flashback, there's a photographer at the door of the original murder... And he goes, is that a star on your, her wrist? And takes a picture. And so one newspaper published this. So whoever copied this obviously read that newspaper. So they go to the one place that there's old newspapers. The library. The library. Canta la biblioteca. Um, I love the smell of libraries, too. I agree with Henry. I don't know the last time I've been in a library. Isn't that depressing? Oh, my gosh. you got to go. Let's take I'm, a field trip, Kate. We'll do a yeah. field trip. Okay. <laughs> so literally, I don't remember. I mean, it must have been college. Oh, it's time. It's probably I know. Later. We'll take a field trip. We'll take a picture there. Okay. Um, so they're at the library, and they're, like, looking through the checkout book, and one of the newspapers is not checked in, so he's probably still there. And so they look around the room, and he just panned to, like, the sketchiest-looking guy. And you just kind of laugh because you're like, yeah, he looks he looks kind of weird. Yeah. And then he starts running, and you're like, you never run from cops. That just makes you look suspicious. Yeah, and then he blames it on being fans. I'm like, come on. But Joe was great. She was like, I love the ones that run. Yeah. I love, I love and then she, that. like, goes and tackles him, so she's, like, such a... Badass. And then he gets another call from Adam at the library. And it's like, how does Adam lurk in the shadows that much that he's following Morgan around and the observant doctor that he is never seems to notice that a man is like two feet behind him? Because he's also been alive for hundreds he knows of years. The tricks so, as well. yeah, he kind of knows how to get by. All right. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't buy it. Need more info. Because um, it had been a while since we really got some Adam Adam. Yeah. I like that we had so much Adam in this episode. Before we get to the interrogation of the guy from the library, Abe goes to see the Frenchman, who ends <gasps> up being a woman. I love her. Dude, what is she from? She was in Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, she and looks super lots familiar. And lots and lots and lots of Lots of, thing. of other things. But that's where I remember her. Um, so the, uh, the Ro- r- Rosalind Chow. She did a good job mm-hmm. as the Frenchman. So fabulous. Yeah. She comes up with her, her handcuffs, and she's like, or Abe's like, who are you going to arrest later? He's like, well, you free for dinner. Oh, oh my gosh. Do you, think him and it, do you think uh, they have a history? Yes, Maybe. absolutely. Yeah. They'll get to that, yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. If not, I'll write it in some fan fiction. It'll be great. <laughs> It'll be perfect. Um, so apparently the weapon that was used in the first murder of Mary Kelly was sold at the Frenchman's shop, and Abe steals her ledger. Uh, here's He's another a example of him. Henry asks him to do something, and he goes all out. You know, that one time he goes he to the apartment and gets the down. clues, and then now this. I love it. Chases after the, the guy in the subway. In the subway? Yeah. <sighs> Abe just wants to be part of the yeah. team. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Because Henry is a bad influence on him. He is. Um, so then they get to the interrogation, and we find out that the guy from the library is the author of Soul Slasher. It's a graphic novel. Mm-hmm. Um it basically very dark, and in the in the novels, he co- is like a, basically a copycat killer of very notorious murders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like you said, he thought it was fans chasing him, not the police. Yeah, don't buy it again. I, that happens to me when I'm at Starbucks too. Yeah, yeah? somebody approaches me, I'm like, ah, oh, no, not the fans. <laughs> can't. No. no fans. I just need um, my chai. So then they get, they're like, okay, this has a big part in it. And then there's another crime scene. So it's the Black Dahlia, right? Yeah. This guy, did you that see that movie? That was really creepy. No, oh. I didn't. Oh, it's a creepy movie. Josh Hartnett. Good movie, though. I'll see it around Halloween time. Okay. Um, at that crime scene, uh, there's another clue 
because there was a clue at the first crime scene that the next one was going to be Black Dahlia, and now at the Black Dahlia's crime scene, there's a clue that it's going to be the Boston Strangler. So they get yeah. like that it's following these these graphic novels. Mm-hmm. It's creepy. Yeah, it's creepy. When did they find the Gin Coba leaf? That's not, so then right there. Yeah, right? right there. Okay, which means I love Detective Hansen. He like has to counter everything Morgan says. He's like, yeah, it's a leaf. Yeah, we're What's, in a park. Well, it's we're a park. park. There's the leaves. <laughs> There's there. You, how can you tell that footprints the the killers? There's footprints everywhere. It's a park. Yeah. But of course, Henry knows ginkgo biloba does not grow in that park. <laughs> really impressed that you guys remember the name of that tree. I wrote it down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because it didn't grow there. We have to be observant. They're <laughs> learning from Morgan the best. Um, it doesn't grow there. That he talks to Abe. It only grows in New York or in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, so they. Are they looking online at who's on the Soul Slasher website? Yeah, so mm-hmm. she said he says to look for somebody who's chatting from Brooklyn. Okay. And then they trace it back to the house where they break in with, like, the whole SWAT team. <laughs> you think they would need, like, a warrant? I guess it's probable cause, but they just, like, storm that yeah. house without knowing if anyone is actually at fault. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's not a crime to post on this website. Hmm. Mm. Not quite sure. Um, But they at first they see the dad. Yeah, and he's nonchalantly on his Mac or whatever. Yeah, Um, and then they see that the person's still chatting. So somebody's in the house still chatting on that site, and they go upstairs, and the kid, the teenager, turns around like no big deal. There's three men in there with guns drawn, about to blast them. What does he say? He's like. What can I? Yeah, you can say, I help like, this you? is interesting. Hi. Or, I don't or like, know. Yeah. what do you want? Like, <laughs> so nonchalant. And you're just like, this little 18 year old. Ugh. So creepy, though. So Ugh. creepy. He's in the interrogation room, and I'm like, you've watched one too many CSIs. Was he flirting with Joe? In a weird way. Like in a yeah. weird, creepy way. He's like, you don't mm. have enough to hold me, do you? Like, He's like laughing. He's like, you don't, you would need DNA, right? And you don't have that, is my guess. He's so and then creepy. he's really excited because this is gonna like boost his popularity on the site. And you're oh like, yeah, this is just so disturbing. His blog is about to get a lot of likes and whatever. But so th- using the Frenchman's ledger, it's in a code because like her business is all about uh, confidentiality. Mm-hmm. But of course Henry breaks the code. Of course he does. And, someone, and we don't even get to hear wh- how. How? No. He's like, that's not important. Yeah. We just did. <laughs> The the knife that was used in the first murder was bought by someone named Bentley. The eighteen year old, old his last name is Bentley. The dad is Bentley, so they assume it's the teenager. Mm-hmm. But when so Joe goes to the judge because she's concerned that this evidence is not going to be able to be used. Yeah, she needs a subpoena. But in, and she's like, stay put to Morgan. No, no, no. not a chance. She's not going to stay put. He goes to the Frenchman convinces her to play along, say, you know, keep it between us that we kind of stole this evidence so a murderer isn't locked up. But sh- what does she call him, the Bentley? It was some... Ojisan? Oh, oh, Ojis... Oh, oh, like Japanese for man. Yeah. And Henry's and not, like, wait, what? Not even just man, like a like uptight man. Like, oh, yeah, straight uptight man. And he's like, wait, he wasn't a teen? And she was like... No, he had khakis and a polo and, and a sweater. And then flashback to uh, the dad. Called it. it was the daddy. <laughs> and then this is when we scream because Morgan walks out and the dad stabs him and we got in trouble for screaming so loud. That's where it was. Yep. Okay. I did we not were, see we this coming. Long. Did you guys see this coming? No, not at all. It was, it was a, a great moment. It was yeah. a good little it got twist. Because we're like in there like, mm, how did this, how did that? Ah! Yeah. It was good. It was awesome. Prop writers. <laughs> Uh, I like when they keep us on our toes. I want more of that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so um, he brings, he's basically leaving Morgan on the front stoop to basically bleed Ooh. out. And then he goes in uh, to attack the Frenchman. I'm sorry right. to, to interrupt, but he's like, you're yeah. about to die in. And then Henry's like, eight, eight. minutes. <laughs> and then he like twists and he's like, actually closer to the four. That was the best. But if it was that deep of a wound and he was going to die in that many minutes, how did he have the strength to like, Get up, go into the house, find him, like, attacking the Frenchman, and then attack him. Yeah. Well, my guess is not, it's not his first time getting stabbed, so he knows, he knows what it feels like, and he's like, I can push through this, because it's going to be over soon. And right? I guess he doesn't really have that much fear, because he knows he's not really going to die. Right. 
But it must hurt. I mean, they're falling down the stairs, and that knife is, like, digging oh. in as he's falling. We definitely went through that entire fight yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, it scared me, though. So he, you know that he's going to die, and you're like, who is going to see him disappear? Did that go through your head? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Tons. Yeah. Especially Joe's coming up. Yeah. You know, she's in her car. You, we know she's going there because she just st- spoke with Abe. Mm-hmm. He's like, give me the Frenchman's address. And he's like, uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, like, he still has the phone in his pocket probably because yeah. Adam just called. <laughs> like, something's going to happen. So I thought someone was going to walk in on something yeah. and couldn't explain it. But... Um, she walks in, uh, they're downstairs, he's dying, he steps on, uh, the dad steps on his back, and, like, you just hear more bones crack, and you just wince again. Kind of looked like it felt good, though. I was like, yeah. I need that, like, adjustment. <laughs> I need an adjustment. <laughs> I need a serial killer to step on <laughs> yeah. my back. Um, but he, he just leaves him there to die, and the dad walks back upstairs, little did he know that Joe's inside, and she shoots him. Yep. Not okay. Mm-hmm. First one for her. Right? Yeah. You, you called it. That out. Yeah. Well, the way that they they did a close up on her, she looked kind of sad, and she seems like, granted, really being a detective at this point, she probably would have killed somebody you already. Think. Yeah. But for the character, I buy it. Yeah. Well, another twist. I got the ca- coming tonight. Adam walks in mm-hmm. to where Morgan's lying. I did not see this so coming close, either. So close yet so far no. away. Where is he watching from? Yeah. But he basically, he can't have Morgan's secret out because they're then his secret's out. Mm-hmm. So he basically kills him so no one sees him disappear. Right. Yeah, you called that line when we were watching. Like, this can't be good for anybody. For either of us. Yeah. <laughs> Because, yeah, he's been keeping the secret longer than Morgan, so he knows the importance. Right. But he, so he slashes his throat, but Morgan says he did it in, like, like Two perfect inches. spot. I don't mm-hmm. know how he described it. So I want to know, like, what he what is or was in his past life or over the years that has, like, so much medical training. It's like he, they're the same person, but to, he's like... The evil one. The evil yeah, one exactly. is, like... But he almost alludes that, like, Morgan will turn into him. Just give it time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, how old is Adam? He's old. A I just know older, he's yeah. a lot yeah. older. So maybe Adam went through the same path as Morgan and then eventually becomes disillusioned mm-hmm. with humanity. And he's like, well, I guess it's time to start slitting throats. I don't see Henry being a killer. I hope he's not. Well, he stands or, up to him at the end, but, like, you know, yeah. you never know if you go through, like, a dark mm-hmm. period. Killing rampage. <laughs> oh. He's not going to kill anyone. Um, so the murderer is dead now. Um, and then this, the episode closes on a scene at a bar with um, Joe and Morgan. I like when they have bonding time. So cute. Mm-hmm. So cute. It's not romantic at all. It's just so I like that, though. Cute. Yeah. They're just yes. building their friendship. Yeah. And he, uh, he pays for some good whiskey. I thought yeah. he wasn't going to let her drink because... We all know that she kind of has a she drinking has a problem. problem right? So when he objected, I thought he was going to be like, no, you will not. <laughs> and then he's like, no, we, no, you will not. We'll be drinking good whiskey. Yeah. Like the glass full of whiskey. Yeah. Well, that was a lot. Yeah. Oh. That was a lot. Of it was like a $50 <laughs> shot. Like last night he died. We need to, you know, yeah, it's get a buzz. Um, so, yeah, like you said, it was her first time killing someone mm-hmm. and she was having a little bit of a hard time with that yeah and that's hard and then that's where Henry says you know you need to feel the emotions Mm -hmm. which I think is important for everything Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you need to go through the emotions for life because when you stop feeling that that's when you have a problem right Right. so and then uh, like we said Adam calls and kind of says you know you'll probably change like I did and murder people and then he's like no I won't and throws it into the ocean or lake or whatever right Hudson. And then later, <laughs> Abe defends him, but I feel like that's foreshadowing to him taking Abe. I know. Well, speaking oh. of that, let's get into predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Brought to you by Little Man from Space. So say that again, because I totally agree with you. Yes, that. Uh, so after um, Henry talks to Adam, then we go to... We go to Abe. No, this is after he dies and he comes back. And then Abe is like, well, you know, he needed to kill you so you didn't get caught. Or Mm -hmm. he actually did you a favor. Mm -hmm. And the way that they're talking about it, I really think that it's foreshadowing that something's going to happen to Abe. Adam's going to do something to Abe and it's going to be horrible and I'm going to hate him I'm not going to like it one bit. Yeah, Henry's fatherly instinct really kicked in. I got like so worried for a second. 
I, I definitely agree with you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I think, just like what I said last week, that Lucas is going to be the first one that finds out Henry's okay. secret. I'm writing that down. And I feel like with the conversation with Joel today kind of fueled that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I'm still feeling that. Um, my predictions. I want someone to see him die and disappear and him not be able to explain it. If, if it's Joel or Lucas... Fine. It has to be someone because I think that's just going to blow this, like, the whole series out. Like, yeah. I don't know how they're going to deal with it. Well, in the next episode that we saw the preview for, mm -hmm. he says, shoot me. So does he does get shot happen? but not die? Does he get wounded? We don't want him wounded, though. We want him to just die and come back. We want some action. You know? We need some action. <laughs> You've given us a taste of uh, some craziness in this episode. And we and want we're, more. We're hooked. Yes. We're hooked. We want more. All right. So hopefully we will get that in mm -hmm. future episodes. Let's get into some news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. Um, so I, I told you guys last week when Donnie was on the phone that a colleague of mine, her husband, is the co-executive producer of Forever. It's kind of convenient and a happy coincidence because she can give me little tidbits from behind the scenes. Uh, some casting news. Jane Seymour is going to be on the show in future episodes. Oh my god. How cool is that? Um, I can't reveal what character she's actually going to play, but I have a little bit of a backstory. When the director and his wife and his kids were talking about this character, everyone was throwing out names who should play this character. You know, they of course know who it is. Just the public doesn't know. And it was actually their daughter who suggested Jane Seymour. And when she got the job and found out it was their daughter Drew that suggested her Jane Seymour sent her a thank you video oh. and we actually have that video so check it out hey Drew thank you thank you thank you for letting me be in this movie I hear it's all your fault thank you you've got great taste I hope to meet you soon Oh, how cute was so that? Sweet. How old is Drew? Do you know? I think she's like 12 or oh. between 12. She has a daughter that's 12 and 15, so okay. I'm not sure so which one Drew One is. of those. Okay. So, but cute. Yeah, still adorable. adorable. How, I mean, like, she's making like big casting decisions. Future in casting, for sure. Give her yeah, credit on go. this. I know. Yes, need casting wasn't that nice Drew. of her to send her a little video? Oh, yeah, exactly. Adorable. I Wait, love her I accent. Want, we kind of, I have a, a pretty good idea what character she's going to play, but I want to know if you guys can guess it. So tweet us what mm -hmm. what character you think Jane Seymour is going to be playing in future episodes. And then we got some behind the scene pictures uh, today that were taken today. So we want to show you some. First we have fresh Lieutenant... Fresh off the press. Fresh off the press. <laughs> we have Lieutenant Reese in an editing bay looking over some cuts. Um, we have Yoan getting some final makeup touches before a scene. And then we have a cast shot of everyone together on set. We have a picture of the director's screen. Um, then we have an interrogation room scene that you can see from a little bit from afar. Uh, a forever director's chair, um, director's screens, and then the forever slate. And I'm sure we'll be getting some more pictures from the set. So I'm excited I about that. I can't wait. I love that, that hookup so that exciting. you have. That's awesome. I know. Is thank that, you, guys. Thank you, Wendy Brokaw, for all of your help. <laughs> oh, I wish that they were closer and we could go visit. I know. We, just we need to take a road trip. Road trip to New York City? Yeah. All right. Why not? Forever. We're sure. coming for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies. Where can our viewers find you on social media? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Pegarad. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Mary Lou Mandel, M-A-R-I-E-L-O-U-M-A-N-D-L. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Kate Aquilano. That's A-Q-U-I-L-L-A-N-O. Thanks so much for joining us. Same time, same place next week. Have a good time. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.